Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Wednesday, July 30th. This is episode number 40 of Fish Talk Live with Mr. Ron Demers. We got a pretty hot topic going on tonight. We're going to be talking about Facebook groups and what's going on with Facebook. So, you know what we do every week is we share out, share this out into groups that you are part of, uh, groups you have permission to share in. See if we can go ahead and get a bunch of people on tonight. We are doing the spin to win wheel tonight, and uh, some lucky people are going to win some cool stuff. Uh, so, let me do my shares, and you guys do your shares. going on everybody welcome to fish talk live we're live tonight this is episode number 40 can you believe it 40 episodes we got an awesome episode tonight we're going to be talking about all this craziness going on on facebook so go ahead and share this out this is going to be a very informative show for everybody let's see how many people we get on tonight Yeah, getting ready to start. So every week we ask that, you know, people share this out, share it out on your personal pages, send some messages to your family. However, let's see if we can get a bunch of people on for tonight. And we are almost ready to start. Yeah, yeah, share this out. Share it in your favorite groups. Share it to your best friend, your sister, your brother. It's, we got us some really cool stuff coming on tonight. And here we go. Let's get this thing started. going on everybody hey i just want to welcome everybody to wednesday night's fish talk live with mr ron demers how's it going everyone i'm dave gould and uh i'm uh kind of the co-host but mostly the director of this show I'll put these things together for you uh, you can see my Mbuna tank in the back so if this is your first time on fish talk live uh we are a live multi-streamed gamified show that has been going on for the last 40 episodes, which is about 10 months, I guess. And uh, we um, are bringing the hottest topics to fish keeping to social media. Uh, we stream live on Facebook. We have, we're live right now on YouTube. We're also live on Periscope and Twitch. And you can find us on LinkedIn on the Fish Talk Live page on LinkedIn. So we are just loving doing this show. Um, every week I get to put the show together. We, we come up with topics that are going to be useful for you, our community. This is in support of the Ron Cichlid's, um, uh, Cichlid Clubhouse on Facebook, a, a group that we run. And um, every week I get to introduce my friend. So Mr. Ron Demers is an African cichlid breeder out of West Palm Beach, Florida. He's been doing that for now for... Well, I've been saying 26 years for 10 months, so maybe it's 27 years now. Um, he's also the guy behind that food that is that ever, you hear about all the time, which is Ron Cichlid food. And um, so I call him the, the fish food chef for that amazing mix of uh, quality ingredients for all of our beautiful African cichlids. Um, he's also just an awesome father and husband. Uh, he loves cichlids. He's a lover of cichlids. Here he is, my friend, Mr. Ron Demers. What's going on, Ron? What's up, my friend? Thank What's you very on? much. Yes, sir. Another beautiful day. Um, glad to be here. Feeling better. Should be a great episode. 
Um, this oh, yeah. is some topics that's on everybody's uh, mind. If you haven't heard about this recently, then uh, you've been off the grid. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of hype and a lot of uh, everybody's trying to figure out what's going on, man. They're just trying to figure out what is really going on. So we're going to hopefully tonight bring in some of those answers. Uh, who are you seeing online? Let's do some shout outs. Um, Candace Lane, Craig Cox, Chris Johnson. Um, our moderators, Missy and Tasha, uh, Don James is on Kevin, uh, Charlie, um, a couple more of our mods, Mindy, Scott, and James. Awesome. Um, got a bunch of people tonight. Appreciate all you guys, uh, tuning in. Yeah. So one of the cool things about the platform, and so you, you guys hear me call it the platform that includes his website all, all the work we do on social media which is is not just facebook it's on twitter and uh, uh um, instagram uh, on linkedin and all that so when i talk about the platform but anyway there's this in this huge influx of female energy so awesome a shout out to all the girls that have been joining up and watching and doing all that it's good to see everybody on there i'm trying to bring it up that was the one thing i didn't do is bring up uh what i'm trying to do here so um, give us an update on how you feel, bro. I'm doing pretty good. Um, Monday I was a little sore, but uh, I'm getting better. It's, uh, it's just rough. You know, my body's utilizing resources to heal. So yeah. I kind of sleep in in the morning and I get wore out by the afternoon and business is growing <laughs> every day. So trying to keep up with everybody's orders like nothing happened. Uh, it's hard. It takes a lot out of me, but. You all know where my heart lies, so I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, if you guys don't know, Ron, uh, about uh, three and a half weeks, I guess, uh, had some discs taken out of his neck, three of them actually, and uh, you're looking good. Like I said last week, you look like you've come back to life and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, he, was in a lot of, he was in a lot of pain, and I laugh because there's this one thing, and you all might not know, and I don't mind sharing is that I do kind of like a Spanish siesta work day. So I work in the morning until about three, and then I take a, what he's always teasing me, my grandpa nap at three o'clock, and then uh, come back and work late into the night. So I've been doing that for years now. But So now you're doing the grandpa nap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I get really, really exhausted, I go lay down. I mean, I'm not really sleeping, but my body right now is healing, and it's a lot of healing going on in my neck. I mean, like you said, three discs are gone. Yeah. There's a titanium plate in there holding everything together. So um, when I get tired, I get tired. I have no control over it. So, yeah, the the grandpa naps are uh, – it's invigorating. It I almost helps. took one today. I just had too much work to do, yeah, too much yeah. fish shipping out. I couldn't take a nap. <laughs> Well, like we do on every episode, we like to inform our viewers on how to best leverage the whole platform. Um, it, we have uh, an information service we call our chatbot information service, and it's easily activated. So right now in this live um, show in the chat, you can type in star info. If you type in star info, you can that will open up a message with our information service. You can get our one touch call in. I know that Every person that calls in tonight is getting something. So call in with your questions a little bit later. Um, it also has our sponsors and things that we care about, like uh, forocean.org. Uh, and uh, there's information on sponsors and people that we're supporting, like Aquashella. You can uh, access Aquashella's websites and things like that. So, And you can type in star Aquashella. That will do it as well. So... Um, that's what's going on. We are on YouTube, um, growing every single day. It's a harder platform to build, but, um, more and more subs all the time. So if you're watching on, on YouTube right now, give us a like and get subscribe to the channel. Um, also on Twitch as well. So, um, go full screen. We put a lot of time into the graphics on this show and, and, you know, we're trying to make it cool for y'all. So go full screen. Um, if you missed any episodes, you can find fish talk, um, episodes at fish TV. That's the landing page. And it's also connected to Ron I think that pretty much, <laughs> pretty much does it. Uh, normally at this time we, uh, shout out groups, people that contact us and say, Hey, you know, we like your show and, uh, we'd like to go back. Haven't heard too much that way. I think everybody's kind of doing their own thing, which is fine. 
Um, but if you do have a group that you want promoted, we'd love to do that for you. So contact Ron or contact the Fish Talk Live page and we'll do that. Let me show you something kind of cool. <laughs> Let's see. Well, first, okay, so I'm moving, right? Uh, I didn't want to say that. But anyway, I'm moving and uh, my fish are, be are leaving the house and my 10, 11 inch Oscar uh, came and got picked up. And um, anyway, you heard me talk about the Reed family. Let me play this video. It's pretty awesome. My name is Mackenzie Reed and I love Fish Talk Live. That's awesome. Hi, my name is Shayla and I love Fish Talk Live. That's awesome. So everyone, I'm standing out here with uh, a good friend and local uh, fish keeper, Mr. Robert Reed, and these are his awesome daughters. So what's your favorite fish, Mackenzie? Oski. <laughs> so they came by to pick up my Oscar and, and Mackenzie's digging on Oski. Do you have a favorite fish, Shayla? The touch is big, my dad flame. Flame? Awesome. And awesome. Awesome. Well, say hi to Ron, everybody. Hey, Ron. Hi. All right. Well, take it easy. We'll see you later. So that was kind of an awesome little story. They they actually came by twice, uh, got the Tetra Stigma the first time, and uh, Mackenzie, the, the little girl with the red hair, she's like, oh my gosh, you're, you're real. You're the guy from this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too funny. Any, anyway, it was awesome to see you guys again, and I told you I was going to put you on Fish Talk Live, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I have another little human interest. If you guys noticed, I've changed formats a little bit in Fish Talk Live, and I do a little human interest uh, video. This is kind of cool. I found this, Ron. Uh, it's a new fish they found five miles deep off the, co off the coast of Peru. Wow. Well, if you're feeling a bit narky this Monday morning, this is going to put a smile on your face. Almost 8,000 meters below the surface of the Pacific Ocean, somewhere off the coast of Peru, a new type of smiling fish has been discovered. It's officially called a snail fish. And scientists say that unlike most <laughs> deep sea creatures, it hasn't got those gnashing teeth or those creepy goggly eyes. It's actually quite an attractive fish. Our science correspondent Thomas Moore has been taking a closer look. The Pacific Ocean off the coast of Peru and this camera equipment is on a four-hour free fall to the deep. Almost 8,000 metres down, it hits the bottom of the Atacama Trench and reveals life that's never been seen before, a new species of snailfish. They're no more than 30 centimetres long, with barely a bone in their translucent bodies. The immense tea. pressure of the water holds their gelatinous flesh together. They go against the mold of what you'd imagine for a deep sea fish. You know, there's no gnashing teeth, there's no uh, creepy bulbous eyes. Um, they're sort of small pink jelly-like fish. Uh, they look as if they're smiling. They've got uh, quite a playful way that they swim around. Uh, so I find them quite endearing and I think it's really useful to see, you know, the world's deepest fish is, uh, is quite an attractive animal. It's quite a, it's quite a beautiful animal. The team from Newcastle University found three new species of snailfish, a family named after a shallow water cousin that bears a closer resemblance to the mollusk. Despite the perpetual darkness and temperatures just above freezing, it's not a bad place to live. This deep, they're beyond the reach of predators, and there are plenty of small creatures living on the seabed for them to feed on. Ever more robust equipment is allowing scientists to take cameras to parts of the ocean they couldn't reach before, and it's a secret world that's full of surprises. Thomas Moore, Sky News. Okay, so that's our little uh, promo video. We are going to be talking about what's up and going on with Facebook. All these pages and groups getting shut down. A lot of information that is being passed around. Some of it's true, some of it's not. And uh, so Ron and I talked about it and we said, um, well, we can kind of give an explainer. Um, I've attended, so let me give some background on myself. I've attended the Facebook uh, Developers Conference uh, and listed as a Facebook developer since 2009. Uh, I didn't go last year, but I went every year uh, through 2017. 
And so you make friends there and you know who to contact and talk to. Facebook is kind of a, I don't want to say secret, but they don't give up. Like they, they're not like, you can't call Facebook and be like, hey, what's going on? They just, you know, you're not going to get that kind of information. So, you know, from what I've been looking at and things like that. So we thought we'd do that. Um, you know, part of it is like, is helping out uh, other people as well, including Ron's competition. I'm sure... Uh, oh, we've got 110 people on, by the way. <laughs> you guys know what that means. Uh, 100, uh, when we get to 100 people, we don't do the spin to wheel. And the spin to win has multiple prizes on it. We just go straight to large fish off of Ron's website. So if you, uh, if you want to win that prize, stick with us through the show until we get there. Um, but anyway, so, you know, it's kind of like helping out Ron's competitors, but that's the kind of person Ron is. Ron's like, let's make a better community. Let's get everybody on board. And those that can, you know, do it, take that step from kind of, you know, uh, home business, not investing so much into need to try to work together. Yeah. You yeah. Know, we've been saying this for a while. We're not all against, you know, competition with each other. There's no reason why we can't help each other in this industry yeah so that's what this show is is, is we're gonna put out a lot of useful information which some of you are gonna look at and say why would you help your competition it's i don't look at it that way i'm trying to help the hobby yeah, not worried yeah. about the competition <laughs> yeah. i'm always trying to help the hobby make the hobby better make people's experiences better those that you know me no, that's the truth. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing is that, so, so to give you some numbers, so that was a little bit of my background, do the Facebook developer. I have my own creative agency. Uh, I build websites, do graphics, videos, uh, create shows like this. So um, that's usually when you want to start to talk, I pre-qualify, you know, hey, I do know some things. Um, More are, than qualified, my it, friend. We're going to take some calls tonight. So I did want to show the uh, graphic for the call-in. Uh, if you got a piece of paper, you can write it down, but you don't have to because you can type in star um, info and you can get a one-touch call. If you're on mobile, you just click it and it will call in. So we're hoping that your questions will be calling questions tonight. Like I said, everybody that calls in tonight is going to receive uh something from ron tonight so that's pretty awesome and uh let's just jump right into it i'm gonna kind of set this a little bit let me set it all right now i can go all right everybody so um i wanted to just kind of run through this it's gonna be pretty quick um, I'm hoping that this is going to open up more conversations with, on groups. You know, that's one of the main missions of Fish Talk Live is to open conversations, not only in Ron's groups, but in all groups. Um, so first, let's just figure out what's going on. And, you know, um, it, it's, a, you know, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, we got closed. We got closed. And I've seen several places and they're closed. The one thing to know about this is that this is not. Um, from what I can tell, this is very reactive amongst the community, meaning that um, Facebook is not targeting legitimate businesses in, that are following this. So th what the rules are is that Facebook doesn't allow animals to be sold on their platform. They also don't allow bombs, uh, uh, marijuana, guns. There's a ton of stuff. But one of those things is animals. And so in 2017... They decided to start tight, tightening up a little bit, and they started announcing that, well, hey, if you have a group or your page is selling animals outside of our guidelines, we're going to shut you down. Well, they didn't really do a whole lot of that shutdown through 2018. And in January 2019, they, decided, they said, okay, we've warned you, and now we're going to start tightening it up. And so in January, we started seeing some of the first closures of uh, groups like that. Now, what they're looking for, you know, is uh, really, it, honestly, it's a, they're looking for uh, the businesses that don't have licenses and don't have websites. They don't actually have a store. These are just people that use social media to sell fish. So that's really what they're kind of 
uh, targeting and all of that. Now, from that, there's a lot of hype and misinformation. Everyone is uh, talking about it as this they know that as their expert. I can tell you as a Facebook expert in, a, in other markets and everything, I don't know everything. <laughs> I've been searching it out. I've been uh, on the telephone and doing all my research and contacting friends of mine that uh, are connected with Facebook in one way or another, if not working for Facebook. And... Um, so this is you know this is what I've what I've seen, um, but there are people that are stepping out there and speaking as if they know, and they're saying this is what it is and this is what needs to be done, uh, and I've found that there's a lot of that information just it's just not true, <laughs> you know it's just it's it's kind of like I don't know it's hard to describe wrong but like cry wolf yeah cry know? wolf uh, the sky's falling Nelly Nelly and all that, um, you know the reason that we can talk about this and some of the advice that I give Ron is that um, with Ron, you don't hardly see him selling fish. You don't see him like <clears throat> blue sapphire, $39 or breeding group, 80, 80 bucks. It's, it's not so much like that. What he, what, what he is promoting is his, his store, his website. So um, a lot of the people that have gotten in trouble lately, they don't have that. They don't have a place uh, in which they go and they do that. Uh, Ron, with the, the platform as well, we actually have an ads account. So, uh, you know, they're not going to target their advertisers as well. So my suggestion, if you're one of those people out there that's really worried about your income right now because of the way you sell fish on social media, uh, do a couple of ads. You don't have to do them for fish. Just do them like, hey, I've got a store and I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida, and just do that. Um, so that is one, one level. And also get a website. So, you know, some of the, the things have been like really crazy that I watch. Like they're like, erase everything you've got. No more of this. Erase it. Well, I'll tell you what. Facebook is one of the smartest technologies on the planet. Absolutely. Their artificial intelligence, uh, facial recognition, uh, how they, they, they process pictures and they can see pictures. So if you've got pictures out there of fish with a $25 and a number symbol on it, <laughs> auction tonight, you know, starting at this, you're going to get flagged immediately. And um, there's nobody sitting at Facebook going through this. This is all happening automatically. Uh, and you know this like when you, up, you go up to the... Um, you know, you go to a concert and you upload a picture with your friend. And as soon as you do, it says, is this Joe Blow? And it is Joe Blow. <laughs> and you're like, what? That's the power of the artificial intelligence with the facial recognition programs. The other thing Facebook has is working for them. And it's part of what they do. So you have to understand Facebook is not in the business of creating friends and friends. They'll say they are all day long. But as soon as they hit one billion it's been a totally different game for them. They're all about collecting your data, every single website you go to, everything that you type in your messenger, I wanna buy a camper. Next thing you know, in your news feed, you are seeing uh, advertisements for campers. Um, this is what they do, this is how they make their money. And um, so just know that, that's their algorithm. It's working for them, but it's also working against us in the sense that if they say, um, as part of one of the parameters in the algorithm that they want to find everybody in this country that's selling guns online, they're going to find that and you're going to get flagged <laughs> and they're going to watch you. So um, another thing about Facebook being smart and that you need to know is that Facebook never deletes anything. Okay. Yeah. So what that is, is like, there's been groups that are like, Oh, quickly erase this, erase this, erase this. And they'll never know. And they won't find out. <laughs> It never gets erased. It goes into a trash bin, you know, just like on your PC or your Macintosh, you have a trash bin. And until you empty the trash or until Facebook purges, uh, it's still there. Well, here's the thing. Facebook doesn't purge anything. They collect everything. It just makes more sense for them to keep buying more hard drives and saving it and saving it and saving it. So they can go back and look at anything that you ever erased. Uh, any uh, even posts that you've changed, they have, you know, they store all the history for that and all that stuff. So that kind of doesn't work. Um, just letting you all know that that doesn't clean up. The other thing is, is they have access to your messenger. 
So if you think that messenger is hiding one layer behind, well, if I just throw the fish out in front of them and then I tell them, PM me, you know, send me a private message, right? Uh, and then I can talk to them in secret and I can give them prices and stuff. No, if you're flagged and Facebook is actually looking at your page or your group or however you're doing that, it's usually through a page on that. Um, they'll go through and they'll find out what kind of communication and they know exactly what you're doing. You know, if you're like, hey, PayPal me, you know, <laughs> send me money or whatnot. Uh, they know that you're selling fish out of the garage. That's that's it, basically. So if you have a website, right, and you're in your communication, you are saying, uh, you know, go to my website. Here's here's the link to that fish you're interested. You want a living stone egg that's five inches long? Here's the URL. Boom, it goes to the website. They go through. Now they can PayPal you and all that. And Facebook doesn't. And I have to give a disclaimer. I can't speak on absolute terms here. I just had this conversation with uh, Ron before we started. Uh, you know. It, this is their business. They do whatever they want and they can change it at any time. And we've seen them do that. We've seen them continuously change kind of like how they do things and why they're doing things. So anyhow, uh, how am I doing so far, Ron? Doing all right. Not all bad. Right. <laughs> well, I was just trying to see if you wanted to talk at all. Just a lot of information and um, mm -hmm. what we're trying to do and what Dave's trying to let you know is, is no matter what you think you can and and to do behind the scenes they know they know what's going on it, you you may not be a big fish or a big target so to speak right now but if you're a repeat offender um you've been flagged already and they're gonna keep digging into your business until you're either gone or you completely clean up your act that's what it boils down to yeah yeah so I've got a few things here. I'm going to skip ahead because, like I said, I wanted this to be really quick and uh, not too deep. You're always welcome to reach out. You're always welcome to start conversations. I will help in any possible way. This is what I do. My agency builds mini empires is like what we like to say to our clients is we build these little mini empires. We build platforms, do the websites, do the graphics and the branding that turns your home hobby into a legitimate business. Um, but I do want to pass up to Facebook pages why some of them are working. Well, it's because there's a website attached to it. Bottom line, there's a website attached to it. So, you know, if we, you know, I saw Trevor O'Shea say something about this on another group and it was just great. So, shout out to you, Trevor, on that. But, um, you know, uh, you have a brick and mortar business or you have a website or you have your, um, business license or you have a logo that looks decent like you've actually invested in your company Th those types of things is what they're going to look at and, and do that so that's why some facebook pages are um kind of you know they're doing it right that's that's th they're working for those um the another thing to consider here is that facebook marketplace is uh, another reason why all this is happening right now so facebook <coughs> hasn't told us what their end result of Facebook marketplace is, but I would imagine that they're moving into kind of an eBay model, you know, where they can get a few cents off of things that are sold or something like that. But obviously um, what you don't want in your Facebook groups is something that's attached to Facebook marketplace. And those are what they call um, selling groups. So, you know, where you can list things for sale. Now, they totally want that. Facebook wants millions of those, right? Uh, local area garage sales sites and all that. It doesn't work for fish, though. Okay, so um, you got to keep, keep that into your aquarium stuff and, you know, selling things like that. Obviously, if you're promoting a website or you're promoting a um, Facebook page that has a website and a legitimate uh, footprint in business, um, you're gonna, it, you know, you're in that gray area and in, in, in that. So, um, I call it a lot. The people that sell only on Facebook, as far as that, I, it, it's I call it fish slinging. It's just a way for me to understand that the differences between the two. And if you're out there slinging fish, your only uh, operation to sell fish is on social media. Uh, you need to get a website. You need to legitimize your business and, and you'll have a, um, a better time. So that's kind of, you know, uh, it, 
can stabilize your social media platform. Now, here's the thing. Facebook's not going nowhere. These fish groups are not going anywhere. There's a big, huge push right now, uh, which is kind of crazy, in my opinion, as a professional social media manager looking at platforms and things with Band. Okay, so first thing I want to say about Band is, yeah, it looks good. Ron Cichlids is going to have a presence on Band as well. Um, Are we going to devote the full time to that? Probably not, no. But here's the thing is that you need to know what band is and why band is doing it. Their intent and purpose is big data. They want a little chunk of the money that Facebook gets by selling your data. So everything that all your check-ins and the restaurants and the food you eat and the people you see and all that crazy metadata that they're collecting from you, they sell that and band wants to do that too they just want a little chip off of that too so know that that when you open up to band you're opening up to another full service sell my shit kind of uh platform anyway so that's what that is uh my my review or my initial thing of a band is, yeah it's cool it functions it does what it has to do um it's extremely limited um, you, you know, cross sharing and platform sharing, um, from one to the next is not there. I can't integrate, uh, Instagram on band. I can't. And th- that's one of the things I do really well for Ron's is integrations on the back end. Um, so when I first started working with Ron, I was like, what do you need? And he says, I need more time. Cause I'm doing menial tasks over and over and over. So when we built Ron's, <laughs> We built it so that it can automate, you know, that you do this one time here and boom, it trickles out to everywhere else and all those types of things. Band is not part of that. I'm, I haven't dove into the Zapier. If you guys are techies and you understand what I'm saying, I haven't dove into any sort of Zapier integrations yet, but I, I just don't see it. Obviously, you can do some things with webhooks or whatever. On a user end, Band, um, yeah, you're probably going to find some of the same groups and all that. Uh, But you're going to be switching apps. So you find something on Facebook you want to share on on band. You're going to either be copying, pasting, or you're going to be saving to your phone and then re-uploading and things like that. So let me say this. I'm not poo-pooing band. I just don't think it's an an alternative to Facebook. Facebook is where we all live. (laughs) It's like deep rooted in our and who we are and what we're doing. Um, So... You know, I look at it as kind of, if you all remember the bulletin boards, like 2007, 2000 to 2011, those, all these bulletin boards, you know, and they're still there and we also get great data from them. But have you ever seen them that they're just really kind of living in limbo, kind of almost dead, but still there. (laughs) But, um, so anyway, uh, I don't think band is going to take off the way people think it's going to, um, it might be useful for those people that are just not willing to legitimize their business and move forward. Um, but anyway, so that's my uh, take on band. Uh, we went and grabbed our, what we needed on band and you'll see Ron cichlids on band. But like I said, we'll probably won't devote a lot of time to, you it. know, in, in part of what you're saying, here's the reality for you guys who run a business doing this, like myself, the, the customers that you're targeting aren't always the ones that you're yapping to on Facebook. Okay. A lot of my business just comes from people browsing on online and finding my website and then finding other info. A lot of these people that are on Facebook groups and say, well, check out Joe Blow's cichlids. They're not going to switch and go over to band and, and then add band, uh, add an account to band or log into band to go look at your fish. Plain and simple. It's yeah. too much work. Any of you who are serious professionals at this know that the people who buy fish, I don't want to say lazy, lazy is a bad word, but they're going to find an easy route or deal with the people they're used to dealing with. So unless like, like Dave said, unless you legitimize your business or you have a bigger f- social footprint and you try to yeah. do things right, people aren't going to just jump over to band to go look for you to buy a fish. It's, yeah. it's too much work. You know, and I was explaining to you too, Ron, about how uh, when you look at pretty large, the, the bigger ones. So there's different levels, okay, of fish selling. You know, if you take the big farms that are selling, you know, 100,000 plus every month to breeders and fish stores and all that, they're on that level. And then there's this level that's kind of below that, which is kind of like Live Fish Direct or Imperial Tropical, some of these larger ones. You don't see them so heavily on Facebook. They rely on people's uh, word of mouth and, and all of that. Ron is, is somewhere, he's moving very close to that. I, 
you know, I'll save like what your future plans are, Ron. But Ron, you know, as Ron grows over the next three years or so, you'll see him moving higher into that level and further away from this social media kind of thing. Although he'll have the social media platform, so he's not going anywhere. Don't worry, Fish Talk nope. Live's not going nope. anywhere. <laughs> I'm here to help people. I <laughs> yeah. want to help people. That's yeah. not going away. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, his volume of fish that he does is going to increase dramatically over the next few years. So, but, um, so what was I going to say? Um, the, a lot of this stuff is, you know, and, and it's funny cause customers recognize that, you know, they, they can tell just by a logo or the non presence of a website where that level is and where people are and, and all of that. So one of the, I got two last things I want to talk about, um, before we, uh, move on is, uh, I want to talk about this information that I heard about with PETA, which is stands for people for ethical treatment of animals. Now you might know them. Like I know them from the nineties, bro. Like when they were throwing paint on old ladies, right? <laughs> Cause they were wearing fur coats, like extremely radical, militant animal rights kind of people. Um, so the the information that we found out is that you know the people are like, well, PETA is can c- calling all the shots. They're now stockholders of Facebook. And da, da, da. The truth is, they are stockholders of Facebook, and they're very proud. They've given several press uh, releases off on their uh, fact that they are now uh, stockholders. Does that mean they're calling shots? No, it doesn't. <laughs> they're not calling shots, but. Do they have influence? Do they have the emails? Can they contact Zuckerberg? Do they have like some sway? I'm sure. Yeah, they, they do. They're stockholders. And um, are they major stockholders? I don't think so, but I don't know exactly. Um, are they influencing that? I'm sure they are. I'm sure they're breathing into that. So what I did today is I reached out to PETA and I asked them for a statement. Can you please tell me about Facebook, what you think about um, aquarium, uh, fish keeping, um, and all of that. They did send me a, a response back. So I'd like to read you what PETA's response is. Now hold your breath because a lot of you are going to have a heart attack. Okay. <laughs> I guarantee it. Uh, I know when, uh, I shared this with Ron, Ron and I were like, what? <laughs> but, um, this is their official statement. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you what I think of it afterwards. Dear Mr. Gould, thank you for reaching out. Please see the following statement in response to your inquiry attributed to PETA. Tropical fish born to swim through their own waste on filthy, crowded industrial aquaculture farms are doomed from the day one. Fish have highly specialized needs that most people simply aren't equipped to meet. So these complex animals frequently end up neglected, discarded, and dead. PETA warns that there is no humane way to buy fish who belongs in the tropics, not in a tank. Kind regards, and then she signed it. So we're like, what the heck? So what does this mean? Yes, PETA is an absolute enemy of the fish-keeping community. So... Um, the fact that they're stockholders, I don't know what this means, you know, like, uh, all of that. Um, uh, but absolutely, uh, PETA has just stated right there and I, I can tell you how I feel, but I'll just leave it as that, you know, it's disturbing. Yeah. It's just, distur- they don't, they don't know what they're talking about. Go, go ahead and give me some of your thoughts on that. Ron. It's, it, it, it's just clearly obvious that they are clueless about how fish are farmed, uh, especially here in the States for the aquarium hobby they may be grouping that statement into every fish that's being raised for any purpose across the globe yeah um you know but as we know PETA is the strongest here on our own soil basically um it's also very obvious that they do not (laughs) they don't understand the love that so many of us give into caring for these fish and how much time and money and how manic we are about making sure we do the very best we can for these fish. And any real serious fish keepers 
water parameters, their tank is going to be far better in a lot of cases than the wild habitats that these fish lived in. That's right. I mean, would you, do you want to live somewhere where every day you're looking over your shoulder because somebody's going to eat you? Or, you know, are you in a <laughs> yeah. tank where you're getting fed every day? The temperature's nice. You've got like, like back here, you've got 17 ladies. I mean, life is good, man. I mean, no, they don't understand. Um, I, I, they, they do not under any circumstance. As you guys know, I'm an avid hunter. I'm an avid fisherman, licensed nuisance trapper, the whole thing. I live in South Florida. We've got all sorts of critters running around here that don't belong here. But what they don't understand is the conservational efforts that private fish keepers and organizations, what we have done to help regulate and protect wild fish, restocking programs, and how our fish are being treated. Um, we had Larry Johnson on one of the shows. So many, so much time and effort and money has been put back into restocking fish that are getting low or helping native uh, uh, herds of animals, let's say. It's, um, it's sad that they are so narrow one <laughs> jaded one one-sided narrow-minded where they just see it their way and they don't see it any other way um you know i don't have any ill feelings for a lot of people or or, or places or organizations uh i just think they're going about this the all the wrong reasons i think everybody here can honestly say and raise your hand that you believe in the ethical treatment of animals. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's the reality. We're not going to abuse our dog or our cat or our, or our pet turtle, okay? So we all care about our pets. So telling us that we have men in a fish tank, that we're a horrible person, yeah. that's not right. Yeah. Not so, right. so here's some things that we can do as a community. Obviously, um, I didn't put this into the info service. I considered it, but if you want to... If you want to reach out, I'll give you their phone number and you can call them and tell them that you are an avid Facebook fan and you know that they are stockholders and you keep fish and your fish are happy and uh, their statement is kind of crazy. So that's it for PETA. We, let's open that conversation. You guys want to get all riled up and, and do that. Go ahead. Let's do them in our groups and, and talk about it and talk through it. Um, it's very upsetting and a lot of people have been upset. Here's one thing that we can do. Uh, there is a, um, change.org peti petition that is got 44,000 signatures on it right now. Uh, uh, trying to get Facebook's attention about selling animals. Uh, and I think it's in particular about fish. Um, I do have that URL in the chat box, so you can type star info right now. Look for the button that says sign, uh, petition and, that will take you to change.org where you can uh, sign that petition, which is directly uh, uh, trying to communicate with Facebook about how you feel about um, the whole fish and animal thing going on with Facebook. So that is one, one thing we can do. Um, let's be honest, though, Ron, uh, Facebook and all big business that is incorporated into um, government and things like that. And, you know, Facebook's one of the biggest uh, it's very hard to move the that's that mountain. Yep, <laughs> it's very very hard to move. They're going to do what they want to do, but um, you can still make your voice be heard. Yeah, one hundred and fifty thousand. There's forty four thousand now, and we're not going to add a hundred thousand from this show. Maybe we can add a thousand. You know, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Sign that. Find that at Star Info on our information service. You just type that into the chat right now. It'll open up for you, and you can do that, or you can um, access by sending a message to Fish Talk Live after the show, however you want to do it. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and start taking callers uh, and answering questions. We appreciate you being on here. One of the cool uh, things we're trying to promote right now is a fish show coming in uh, Chicago on September 29th. Here's a little bit about Welcome that. Welcome, everybody, to Aquashella Day 1. This is without a doubt an experience. I've never been to a show like this. I walk around and into these different rooms and look at this artwork, taking pictures and videos of things that I've never seen in 30 years of being in the industry. To see a show of this magnitude bring the two together, fresh water is yes. often the segue to salt water. There are more corals here than other shows that we've been to. Everybody brought the this revolution of artwork. It 
So this is Chicago. It's in Niles, Illinois. September 28th and 29th. If you want more information, you can type in Star Aquashella right now. And the chatbot information service will direct you where you need to be. Come check it out. It's pretty cool. They had one in Dallas. One of the best ones. All right. So uh, here's another cause that both Ron and I are really behind right now. You have a choice right now, today. You can remain indifferent or you can choose to act boldly, wisely, sustainably. What will you choose? Big shout out to uh, one of our sponsors, particularly a moderator for us, uh, Mr. James Smith and his partner, Jeffrey Kirk. They're out of uh, Springfield, Missouri. They have a company called ADA Tank Supply. They supply some of the coolest and most awesome rock you can find. Speaking of a bunch of new female energy I'm sorry premature on that (laughs) there it is uh, adatanksupply.com Ron's got some new shirts on his website if you're a girl and you're looking for girl power shirts that's Ron's wife and his daughter awesome So Ron loves his customers, and uh, here's what they're saying about his company. Hey, what's up? I'm Callan Douglas. I'm from Rochester, Illinois. Uh, try Ron Cichlids, you guys. His fish are awesome. They're big, beautiful, vibrant. I got a couple of them in here. Also, his food. His food is unreal. They devour it. They splash me for it. That's the only bad thing I can say about the food is I get wet every time I feed them almost, but five stars all around. Get a hold of Ron, ronsicklets.com. Hey, so if your uh, Facebook groups are disappearing left and right and you're looking for a place to come and hang out, here's some of the groups that Ron Cichlids is offering. The Mbuna Hangout's an awesome group of people. The Aqua DIY group. Also has a Lake Tanganyika Cichlid Clubhouse. It's growing and great group of people. One of the best places to see pictures of amazing tanks, showcase, and of course the Ron Cichlid Cichlid Clubhouse. All right, so that's about that. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can answer some questions, huh, Ron? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm going to flip over here. Uh, thank you to uh, Missy Straight tonight. Missy Straight is sending... Uh, over um, questions questions for me today i'm sorry i was reading at the same time um <laughs> okay so rosmi ranjan from india thank you so much for reading we love you bro uh he's having some problems with this frontosa best thing to do there bro is to um uh, go ahead and post that up into the Lake Tanganyika Clubhouse. We invite you over to participate there. There's a ton of Frontosa people there that can answer that question for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Cheryl Coley, thank you so much. Oh, and by the way, we want you to call in. Do you need to see the call-in graphic again? Come on, call in. Here we go. Um, Cheryl Coley says, uh, so what is the hobbyist who has young fish supposed to do without fish that breed? but we are not a business. Okay. So that best, best answer for that is, um, and we, and hopefully what will spawn from this is more local community organization of fish keeping where you have people that are like-minded in the hobby that you guys get together, swap fish. Um, a lot of uh, states in big cities have them. We've got them down here. Uh, we've got a Gold Coast Aquarium Society down here that we're always doing fish swaps and meats. Um, that's where you go to, uh, to do that. Some people just bring them to a, a, a local fish store. Um, Craigslist has really cracked down as well. Um, for selling animals as you know and, and livestock and, and uh, fish so um, that may not be an option for you um, too much farther in the in the future either 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for your uh, question. Uh, we invite you to call in anytime. We'd love to hear your voice and talk to you. Uh, Brody Lundgren uh, is his fiance's video is the video of the week, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, can we speak on the issue from a point of view of a group owner that has people still trying to sell in their groups? What should we do? What should you do? You can, you can tell them that you don't uh, allow that in there. Um, well, I think Stephanie kind of laid it out. It may have seemed a little harsh, but I think Stephanie laid it out perfect. The reality is, is you can't do this anymore. If you do it, we remove you or, you know, we, we, you know, maybe one strike and you're out, but the cry wolf part of it is the, a lot of these groups don't want anything to do with that because they're more worried about being shut down. So they're okay with losing a member, um, than having the whole group shut down. So if you're running a group, you just need to lay the rules out there and you're going to have to strictly enforce them or you're going to have to, uh, you know, enforce what you need to enforce. Yeah, I have a slightly different take. Uh, my take is to first get them to watch this episode. There you go. And then two, tell them to get a website and a Facebook page and promote that instead of the fish in the group. All right. So thanks, Brody, for that. We appreciate you, bro. Um, it's always good to see your name come across my screen. Sergio Faz, uh, we appreciate your questions. A little off topic, um, but we do have an episode about media. Uh, go to fishtalk fishtalk.tv and you can find all our episodes there. And there is one episode specifically about media going into canisters. And then you can also scroll through the clubhouse. This question yeah, has yeah. come up recently and yeah. uh, I already answered it. Yeah. So it looks like all the people that like people are bouncing off right now. I would say don't go because we're giving away free fish tonight. Giving it away. So uh, Marcus Lewis, Amir uh, Malawi. That's a long name, Marcus. Uh, does, do you sell others than Africans? Yes. Um, I've recently started uh, dabbling in others. I've always sold, you know, plecos and, and um, you know, catfish and stuff like that. But yes, just recently I'm, uh, I'm dealing more with Central and South Americans. And for any of those of you who want something, even though I don't have it, ask me. Yeah. I have the resource to get it from. Um, just give me, you know, a little bit of time and uh, I have the resource to get you almost anything that you need. Thanks, Marcus, for calling in. Uh, I'm going to take our first caller. So I just brought you in and I'm going to unmute you. Hello, caller. Welcome to Fish Talk Live. You're live with uh, Ron Demers. What's your question here tonight? Where are you from? Hey guys, in your name? All, yeah, uh, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Awesome. And your name? Yeah. My name's Phil. Hey, Phil. Hey, and what you guys are doing is awesome. I really appreciate it. It's awesome to watch this. I, I guess my cool. question was, uh, I'm, I'm a hobbyist, and I'm sure a lot of people here are hobbyists as well. I just love my fish tanks. I grow really quick, and I've gotten seven of them now, and I really want to get into breeding. The problem is, I know, you know, of course, going with something like convicts where they breed like crazy. What's the, what do you think the best way to approach that is? I, you know, I was thinking of going to some of my local fish shops and letting them know I wanted to start breeding. Is there fish they would take as donations and kind of work with them on, on what to do? Um, what's your advice on that? Uh, depends what your end goal is. Uh, are you doing it just for your own enjoyment or do you have intentions of selling off the extras to help pay for your hobby or something? That's, that's where the gray area, you're going to have a, a cut and dry. Um, if you're just yeah. doing it for yourself and you just want to enjoy watching fish breed, then choose a species that either breeds easily or a species that you enjoy and, you know, set up breeding colonies. You know, the background of my, you know, what you see here in my background is a, a breeding colony. All of my show tanks that are in house are, are breeding colonies. Um, okay. But if you end up with a whole bunch of babies, then you're going to have to figure out what are you going to do with them. So convicts, from a standpoint of breeding, they breed very well. They're just very mean. And there's realistically almost no resale value whatsoever in convicts. So, yeah, right. you're, and you're that I understand that. Your LFS and, and will I am trying to do this from a hobbyist perspective. Just then you got to first that. choose what kind of fish do you want. If you want an African cichlid, then you can choose mouth brooders or egg layers. If you want a fish that's mm -hmm. very aggressive, you can go South American or Central Americans and one male, one female. There's just 
we could talk for four hours on which way to which direction to go. Um, it just uh, depends on what you want at the end of the day, what your space limitations are, colors, species, mouth brooding, egg laying. Uh, yeah, we, we absolutely. could talk about this for a week. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. We should we yeah, should no, do it. We should that. do something like that, Ron. Let's do like you know, hey, so you want a breed episode? <laughs> be awesome yeah, hey. it, it, for me it's, I, I do want to see you know the, the process as it goes and, and raise my own fry and it, it's not so much the restriction on, on what I want as far as the fish colors or what kind of fish I do but I, I want to make sure I'm not in a position where all of a sudden I've got a hundred babies on my hands I don't have enough places to put them and I, I don't want to feed them to other fish or, or anything like that so that's where I'm wondering like should I should I call up local shops, my local fish shops, and say, hey, I want to start breeding. Is there anything that you need? I'll give them to you. I just want to experience the process. Um, you can. Um, um, they're, they're probably okay. not going to uh, They're probably not going to entertain that just because unless you give it back to them for really, 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 really free or store credit, it's almost useless. So yeah. You're, yeah, you're I, I think what a lot of people do is they, they'll, they'll take them down to their local fish store and get store credit. So they get some prime or, sure. or whatever you need. Hey, I appreciate you calling in tonight. And uh, we are um, sending off, I think, uh, I forget what we said, Ron. Is it the choice? Uh, it's tank yeah, sticker. sticker or a magnet. Yeah, sticker or a magnet. So, um, <laughs> you, so tell us your name again so I have it clearly because I didn't hear it. Sure. It's Phil. P-H-I-L. Okay. What's the last name? Belcher. B-E-L-B-H-E-R. Okay, so right. um, at, go through the Fish Talk Live page under the menu. It'll say claim prize. Go through that option. That's for everybody that wins something or gets something tonight. Uh, we appreciate you, Phil, and Thanks we'll talk to you in, next Phil. time. Yeah. I appreciate it, guys. Have a great night. All you right, too, you my too. friend. All right. And then let's take another caller quickly. Let's see. This one is, I recognize the number for some reason. But anyway, caller, you are on Fish Talk Live. Uh, give us your name and your location. Hi, guys. It's Athena, uh, and uh, I'm in Endicott, New York. Nice. Hello, Athena. How are you tonight? I'm doing spectacular. I just actually just had a comment. I wanted to thank you and Dave, everyone in the forum. You guys have been helping me tremendously with everything and I also want to say thank you to ADA Tank Supply because I just got my rocks nice. from the 3000 member giveaway and nice. I'm going to post a picture and lots of shout outs on social media to say thank you but I got them and uh, the centerpiece that I got for the center of my tank it looks absolutely stunning so I just want to say thank you to everybody yeah that's that's super awesome don't forget to, that. Yeah. don't forget to go to their page and give a review as well because that really helps oh, businesses wow. yeah he's um, James James and uh, Jeff run a great business very helpful they just yeah. helped a friend of mine yesterday and he's he's like me he will go out of his way to help with any question anything you need so yeah. I'm, I'm glad thank you yeah, thank you. Did you yeah, have it? Absolutely. Did you? That's really all I had to say. But I just awesome. want to tell everyone thank you in the forum and and uh, I appreciate everything you guys do to help oh, me. I, I appreciate the kind words very much. Thank you. Okay, so um, all right, have a good night. I th I think we got you something last time or whatever. So we'll we'll look, but we'll make sure that you have some sort of some. Tank, yeah. tank sticker. No whatever. problem. Thank thanks you guys for, so much. All right, thank thanks you. for calling. Bye bye. All right, bye bye. We have another caller, and then I'm going to jump back to any other questions. So if you have any questions specifically about like Facebook and what was going on and things that we talked about tonight, um, I, I do know that it seemed kind of we talked a little bit about or directed towards people that already have groups and not so much the user end. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about that, but, you know, the users, it's good to know what's going on, too, because like people are like, what's going on? Are they, are they out of business? Not necessarily. It's just Facebook's giving some people a hard time. All right, so our next caller is from area code 408. Let me just put it right here. I'm unmuting you. Welcome to Fish Talk Live. You're on with Ron and myself. Who's this? This is Jennifer. Hello. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. So I just set up my tank, and I kind of changed directions, but I have a quick question. I have Fatosas, Blue Dolphins, and Peacocks in there, which I know those all go together well, but I have four yellow labs. Are those guys going to be a problem? Uh, yellow labs are less of a problem than having frontosis in there. Oh, really? Yeah. The yellow labs, even though they are Mabuna, are one of the more laid back ones that you can get away with, you know, adding in mixed tanks. 
um, frontosas are the ones that even though they get big and they're beautiful, they're the, they're the ones that, um, you have the biggest problems with. Yeah. They're a very peaceful, passive fish and they don't like to, uh, they don't like to compete for space or for food. They don't like bright lights. They don't like heavy current. They're, they're a real laid back, chill, Cheech and Chong type fish. <laughs> I love that. Here's the thing, though, that we always say. So, you know, even though like in this situation, every tank and every fish is different. So you kind of have to see how it goes. But in general, you know, I think Ron's talked about that frontosa do well when they're by themselves and with other frontosas. Yeah. Crap. (laughs) <laughs> well, no, no, Sorry. no, no, it's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> oh my Sorry. gosh. No, uh, I almost cried. No, it's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like, oh shit, I bought the wrong fish. No, it's more like, um, I mean, you get, you learn, uh, it's, it, I think where Ron's coming from is the thrive or survive things. Yeah. Your yep. fish are going to be okay. Yeah. They're, they're going to live. Um, but they prefer their own species it's one of those trophies is another one trophies are cool looking fish but really they do well when they're all by themselves or not all by themselves but species specific tanks and all that species only i mean um you know a lot of fish have dietary needs and and space requirements and stuff i mean i've (laughs) kept frontosas with these fish that you've talked about a lot of us have but there's very special circumstances you know usually it's like the whole thing you know jungle book you know that young man was raised by you know wild animals um if you raise a frontosa from very very small with with mabuna peacocks and haps they actually do pretty well because they don't know that they're a frontosa they were taught by something else so They've got a surrogate parent, so they think they're something else, so they don't know the difference. Yeah. Hey, thanks okay. for thanks for calling in, and sorry, but you, all right. you made my throat my uh, lump go in my throat. She's like, ah, <laughs> you're gonna do fine. You're gonna do fine. You thanks, just watch guys. your fish and see how they go. Uh, we want we want to give you a sticker or a, t- uh, a magnet. Uh, Ron does from his um, shop. So go through Fish Talk Live, say claim a prize, go through that, um, put your address in there, and let us also know what if you want a magnet or sticker, okay? Awesome. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you for calling in. Thank you, too. Bye. Um, there's that. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any more questions, so you know what that means, right? You know what that means. It's time to give away some stuff. It's time for the video of the week. So our video of the week today is from one of the moderators, Kaylee Nyberg, and Full Scale Cichlids. So go ahead and comment on what you see in there, Ron. You want to see it bigger? A big old feather fin squeaker cat right up front, photo bombing all the the loaches. <laughs> I love those little guys. She's got a real nice 3D background in there. Some pretty dragon bloods and Eureka red. That's not a Eureka. That's a German red. I'm sorry. Some some OBs in there and the little loaches back there are trying to steal the spotlight a really that, beautiful fry rye that looks like you, is that a Taiwan on the bottom right now or a red empress red, red empress oh, that's and nice then, that's and then there's a venustus and a tetrastigma looks like there may be a pheno back there there's the, the blue dolphin coming to say hi yeah. um, hey Kaylee thank you so much for everything you do last week she was the question moderator uh, she's a hardworking mom. She's getting married soon. Super awesome lady. Thanks for sending your video in. All right, like we said, Ron Cichlids is a social media platform. You can find Ron at Ron's underscore Cichlids for Instagram and at Ron Demers six for Twitter. All right, so it's not if you're one of the veterans. The other music would kind of get you all jazzed up, but here's this <laughs> one. It's that time. We are going to spin to win. We hit 100 tonight. Yes, Ron. Free fish. Yes. Yeah, so what we're going to do is when we shout out the um, the hashtag, right? We haven't figured that out. I'll let you think about that for a second. When we shout out this hashtag, you've got until the song ends to uh, enter it into the chat. And whoever is picked... Wins a free large fish from Ron Cichlids. So, what do you think about the hashtag? I'm kind of like one of two, like either hashtag no hate or hashtag fish love. <laughs> let's, go, let's go fish love. Hashtag fish love. All right, there it is. So, right now, type it into the live chat. Hashtag fish love. 
Hey, here's a friendly reminder. There was a chatbot giveaway going on tonight, too. So if you haven't put that hashtag in yet, uh, go ahead and try to do that. Hashtag fish love, all one word. Hashtag fish love. And uh, whoever we pick off of that hashtag is winning fish. We're going to get a nice, big, beautiful, four-inch, large fish off of Ron Sticklitz. Love, I dig this little jammy jam for some reason. <laughs> All right, everybody, still got a little bit of time left. Put that hashtag in there, fish love, and you have just won some fish. Whoever gets picked, obviously. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, Fish Talk Live uses some really awesome game gaming software on the back end that allows us to pick winners. Lots of different ways we do it. Uh, hashtags are one way. If this is your first time on the show and you have any questions, you can always ask in the chat. Our moderators will help you out. Okay, so that's that. That's how we do. That's how we roll. All right, so um, I'm trying to find... Not popping up. There I am, little head down here. Okay. <laughs> bear with me a second. Mini while, me. Yeah, bear with me a second while I uh, pull it up. It's supposed to be going here, but. Uh... All right. Well, let me uh, double click a couple things here. Uh, Chrome window, Woo box. Let's go there. Okay. I figured it out. All right, so here we are, and as you can see here, there's this entry criteria. Uh, it doesn't show the hashtag version yet, so I just do this, and then the first, we clear the system, so I click it one time. If you actually see a name there, it's not the winner until we get to it. Um, and uh, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> We have music. Do, 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 do. All right. So let me uh, unpick this person real quick. All right. So we're ready to do this. Um, so you might have heard me say about a chat bot winner. If you engage with Fish Talk Live and you subscribe to our chat bot, I send out secret messages or whatnot. I send out a message every, not every week, but on some two, uh, Wednesdays that says, hey, answer this question or put this in or hashtag this or do this and you're going to be for the spin to win. So we've got that, and we've got this one. So I'm going to go right there. I'm going to pick our hashtag, which was... Uh, love? No? Fish love. So as you can see there, it is hashtag fish love, and the person that just won a large fish is... Oh, wait a minute. I got a drum roll. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> uh, this bottom one is not... It is. it is that so th th i'm sorry if, you, if you're looking at this uh we can explain it out for some reason it the soft put the drum roll down okay uh the top one is for some sort of other message but as you can see here mr brody lundgren so awesome that you um won and congratulations Great. yeah so let me take missy off of there i don't know why it came up but it said some message 110 or something so it still won't even let me unpick her. Okay, there we go. So that's Brody. Now, let me tell you about what we did as far as the chatbot. So I asked a question. Uh, who was the person that coined the term aquarium? In 1832, there was a French guy that he made like the first aquarium style con container, uh, glass that had uh, the ability to have aquatic plants in there and they started putting fish in there. That's not the guy. It's actually a naturalist from England. Um, his name was Goss, G-O-S-S-E, and um, that's who we're picking off of right now. So, 
So there it is right there. Hashtag Goss. And the person that's going to spin, now this will be a spin, um, is Rich Terry. Now part of our rules here is that you have to be live with us. So Rich, please type in the chat right now that you're here and then we'll get you spinning. Okay. Um, I'm trying to look here. We, we don't do a couple of different segments. Um, I was trying to see if there was something here I wanted to do. Um, nah, this is, we'll wait for Rich. Are you there, Rich? Or please, somebody, you know how I am. I can't monitor all this stuff at the same time. If you see Rich, we'll give Rich a couple, uh, a little bit of time there. Um, I pretty much played everything I wanted to play. Uh, Brody's there. Yep. 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 Okay. So we're still waiting for Rich. Um, I there he is. Okay, Rich. Rich, you are a spinner tonight, bro. Congratulations. You have won something. We don't know what that is yet, but watch this. I'm going to pull up our wheel. This is what our wheel looks like. Um, spin the wheel. Another wheel. fish. Come on. Yeah, actually, so if you look on here, um, where was it at? you know what, I'm, in, I'm, you know, Rich is one of my local customers, so you know what, I'm going to let him have a free fish. That's the biggest, best prize on that, on that thing. So you know what, if he wants to spin, he can spin, but if he wants a free large fish, he's got it. Um, Okay, so let's just let's just let him have that option. Oops, I never flipped yep. over. So let's let him have that option. And congratulations, that's two fish that have are, have new homes. That's super awesome. So let me bring us back here. Let's recap a little bit. A lot of craziness is going on on Facebook. A lot of information is going around. Uh, people are like, "Oh my God, you got to go to a band." Uh, yeah, that might be a good alternative for you to do that. Just know that Ron and Ron Cichlids, uh, Fish Talk Live, they're all going to still be on Facebook. Um, so uh, feel free to um, come by, join the group. Um, you know, Fish Talk Live is is a weekly. It's uh, on Wednesdays now. Mm -hmm. um, there, the the long and short of it, though, if you are a um, selling fish, if you're breeding and then selling them, is legitimize your business. Get a website. I build websites. Uh, I can tell you that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to cost you some money, but Ron will tell you that you'll get that money back within six months. Oh, yeah. Plus, <laughs> Especially if, you're if you hire someone like me. <laughs> Plus if you're a legitimate business with a yeah. tax ID and a license, it's a tax write off. Duh. Yeah. 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 So, um, so do that, it, you know, run you between, uh, you know, thirty five hundred and five thousand and $5,000. You want something that's like Ron's, it might run you a little bit more. Um, but it's it's worth it, you know. Buy the business cards, get the logo, do what you got to do. I'm not really tooting my own horn. I'm actually booked uh, right now. So if you <laughs> called me <laughs> and said, "Dave, I need a website," um, uh, we'd have to talk about that. Um, I do have some other options though. With some of my team members, might be able to help you out. Um, anyway, so that's the long and the short of it. Uh, Pete is not your friend. Um, as far as the fish keeping community, we heard what they responded to tonight. Um, and there's the change.org. So go to star info right now in the chat and sign that petition. Let's see if we can get it above 50,000 and, um, we're out of here. Do you, I would like to give you the closing statement there, Mr. Ron. Oh, by the way, sit, stay until the end. This secret show after the credits is insane. <laughs> it's the craziest thing I've ever seen, but, so check that out after the credits. Thanks, Dave. Thanks yeah. for um, thanks for just throwing out some good information and helping everybody. Um, it's as we wanted to make sure that the knowledge that we had of the situation we shared with others. Uh, nothing more. Um, we don't want to see this all go away. Um, it would be easy of us just to say, "Oh, <laughs> good, it's going to weed out the competition." It's not who we are. Um, I think you guys know that. So hopefully um, this information has helped you guys. You guys can do some more digging and research on your own. And um, congratulations to the winners tonight. Um, yeah. That's awesome. I uh, love all of you guys. Um, thank you for your support on the pages. 
And um, like I said the other day, I, I value every single one of you guys. I love every single one of you guys. And uh, if you need anything, reach out to me. Have a great night, guys. existential dread that just makes you want to bury your face in a screen and ignore and run and hide from your own damn head. So you post a status update just to see if you still matter. Seven likes later your dopamine spikes and that's all the validation that you need tonight. And now your phone is heavy and your vision fades. The gentle blue light kisses you goodnight and sends you into a pleasant, digital, dream. I gave you a distraction from your own boredom, anxiety and meaningless existence. I didn't mean to leak your details, but what did you expect? I get busted for privacy shit every six months, remember? But you never left, and you never will. Cause I like money, and you like free shit. That's always been the arrangement. You signed up for this. Don't act like you didn't know, because the writing's on the wall from the moment we first clicked.
But the real truth is that human behavior is nothing more than an algorithm, a predictable sequence of impulses and actions, a program that's... Are you even listening to me? <laughs> Sorry, Mark. I kind of tuned out there. What were you saying? <sighs> it's our compulsions that precede our actions. Free will is just a human construct, a veil through which we... <laughs> One of the craziest videos I've ever shown at the end of the show, but it's awesome. Piece of topical internet content. He's going to show you where his uh, YouTube channel is here. Go and give this guy some props. I'll make it worth your while. I'll film something crazy. Maybe I'll eat this dead rat. Do it in a live stream. Make a thing out of it. Hey, where you going, man? Come on, man. You gotta leave a comment. All right, y'all. Have a good night.